What's up, everybody? What's happening, family? And welcome back to another episode of Is, is This, this Gonna, gonna Cause an, an argument? argument? My name is Angel Lakita Moore Tanksley, also known as That Chick Angel. I'm one of your hosts, and I am joined by my husband of 13 years. Tell him who you are, baby. I am Marcus of Marcus Ain't on the Gram, Marcus Anthony Tanksley, aka Tank. A.K.A. Mr. Man Shit himself. Yes, the other host of <laughs> Is This Gonna Cause an Argument? If this is your first time tuning in with us, what's up? What's, what's good? Happening? Thank you for joining us. I don't know what took you so long to get here, but you finally did the right thing. If you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you're listening to us on, please make sure you rate and review us. It makes us more discoverable, and we yeah. greatly appreciate it, and it's free for you to be able to do that. And if you want to watch us to see what we're doing, you can go to our YouTube channel, which mm -hmm. is That Chick Angel TV, and you can watch these. We want to give a huge shout out to our three sponsors. Absolutely, this episode, we'll tell you more about them, but they are Peanut, Magic Spoon, and Better Help. We also want to give a huge shout out to our Patreon. What's up? That's the immediate family, y'all. They are watching this right now. They can drive this conversation almost anywhere. Yes. Uh, but they yes. are watching this live. Um, and we greatly appreciate them. Yes, so if you too would like to be able to watch this live, be a part of the conversation, you can join our Patreon for the low low of five dollars, okay? At www.patreon.com forward slash that chick angel is five dollars a month, which is 16 cents a day. You get exclusive content. Marks and I actually shot two different couple challenges today absolutely just and, for the patreon yeah. and let me tell you marcus started crying during one of them yeah i'm not going to tell you all what we were doing but he legit had tears multiple tears rolling down his face can't wait for the patreon to see it but it's only going to be for the patreon to see so you're going to have to join to be able to see it um, so we like to begin every single episode off with one of two segments. We either like to tell you what's got us in our feelings, or we like to tell you a Tanksley Pride story. Where's your heart at today, babe? Oh, uh, we can do a Tanksley Pride. Tanksley Pride story it is. Um, I'll start, or do you no, have I'll start yours? off. Um, Go ahead. Because it kind of ties into today, into today. Okay. Um, so like last week... Early last week, I think, I was, um, uh, somebody keeps saying tanks punches. Yeah, I'm trying to think of something else. I hate that. <laughs> you got to let anyway. the podcast know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah. About. So, right right now, if you're listening, you know, Angel has her angel wings. Those are, she has her, basically, her own emoji. If you go to the angel on your emoji thing, it's angel. That's what they use to symbolize it to the angel wings. Kind of like the beehive. The bees is buzzing all in. We got the angel wings all up in the place. They put a thousand angels. Each person it equals up to uh, tanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know we got some wives out there. I'm sure they husband be like, hold on, what you say you was? Right. Um, but no, so we did a makeup tutorial and uh, somebody said, I can't remember who said it. Somebody said, you know, we can call you uh, the tanks punch because I said I punched Angel in the face. Right. So right now they use mine as tanks punches. And uh, I don't like it. <laughs> and we we got a few other other family members that say, yeah, I'm not in favor of it. Either. So I'm trying to think of something, y'all. But anyway, yeah. Tanksley Pride. Looping back around to Tanksley Pride. Um, so last week, I think early last week, I was, uh, I think through my YouTube, because I went back to look at something that we put up a long time ago, as far as like a vlog footage. And a bunch of old stuff kept coming up. I think our marriage thing, uh, one of the marriage uh, things, the videos that we like edited together and put up, I think mm -hmm. that pulled up and then some other stuff and then it was a couple of videos of Marcus when he was really young. He was probably like five or six, four or five. And I ended up watching that video and just seeing him at the age that the twins are now, it's like I still view him like that even though he's getting all lanky and <laughs> all of that stuff uh, with these big long feet. Uh, <laughs> I still view him like that and it was just like watching that. It's like now I can see how parents can shed a tear from looking at a video. Uh -huh. This is like, that's my little baby. That's that little innocent, little, I mean, he's still innocent, but even more innocent then. Um, and then today we uh, went to, uh, he went to get his uh, white coat. So this, he's in his mentoring program. And uh, this year the theme, it's all for all black boys. And this year the theme was uh, the medical industry. 
So they had a, a stethoscope that they wore all year, that they every meeting that they went to when they could go to meetings. Scrubs. Uh, scrubs. Um, I was getting to that. Oh, I was uh, just st- yeah, stethoscope, to scrubs, and then uh, their whole, uh, I guess, graduation or their cer- ceremony, which they usually have it, like as an actual banquet. Of course, they couldn't have it this year. It was a ceremony that they just had at the people that run it in front of their house, and they got their white coat and their uh, medallion or mm-hmm. medal or whatever you call it. So seeing him at that stage and seeing him look, literally looking like a doctor, like an MD, mm-hmm. with this white coat on and his suit, his not suit, but his white shirt and his tie, it's just like, yeah, dang. Like, if you decide to go that route, which he probably won't, this might be you one day. He, he like, wants he to could. be a veterinarian, potentially, oh, so true. he, he, he does, would get a white does, coat that way. Yeah, he would get a white coat for that. I forgot about the veterinarian thing because the gamer thing sticks so strong with him. <laughs> but yeah, so like that stuff, just watching him, like seeing seeing him at this age, at this size, and then looking at the twins, is like he was just there. Mm-hmm. That's like that's why I purposefully I do not I cut their hair in a certain order when I cut the hair. I purposely cut his first because the last time, one time I cut the twins' hair and then I cut his hair and it was like a grown ass man was sitting in the chair. <laughs> Because of the size difference. Yeah. I did not lie. I said, nope, never doing this again. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's why I'm like, yeah, twins, come on. Uh, you wait, Marcus, let me cut yours first. Well, since we're talking about little Marcus, that's what my uh, Tanksy Pride story was going to be anyways. So he went in for his 11-year-old checkup. I took him um, last week or the week before last. And, you know, he's, thro- he's grown, excuse me, like three and a half inches since the last time he went, which was like a year and a half ago. He's still under 100 pounds, which he was shocked. He only gained like six pounds. Um, but so in that way, he he hadn't grown too much. But what the doctor definitely noticed, and I already noticed, is that he's going through um, the early stages of puberty, which hmm. for me is kind of heartbreaking because I know this will be where he'll start to pull away from me, meaning, you know... <clears throat> He already has his own interests. He's not trying to stay up under mama. He likes to look at his video games and stuff like that. However, like, you know, now this is the time where truly he's about to become his own person. So I got him a book. I'd actually mentioned it on my Facebook Live today. I got him a book. I can't remember the name currently. Um, But anyways, it's on... You know what his body is going to be going through and so each day he was responsible for reading a chapter and then um he'd have to come back to me and discuss what he's read so like it was already like when he got to the chapter on <clears throat> genitalia and like sex that just broke my heart <laughs> too he uh we had a uh, like a brief conversation about it i think the book did an excellent job of describing what that is without it uh with it being very age appropriate very factual very truthful um but it's like that thing of like you know there's innocence in childhood when you don't really understand a lot mm-hmm. and you're not expected to understand a lot you're not expected to know a lot yeah but as he gets older, those expectations are going to shift. You're expected to know more. You're expected to understand more. And I don't know. It just breaks my yeah. heart. Because he's uh, my first, yeah, you know? It's actually a really good book because we asked him to give us a recap of what he read um, every every day. And he's, like, been able to explain. He was like, okay, so how you feel about that? Yeah. Like, you know? <laughs> right. Because I, I also, like, as much, I you know... In my head, I've dreamed about, like, oh, we're going to have this, like, really open communication. He's going to be ready to talk. You know, he'll feel comfortable talking to me about whatever. Like, he's ha- he's mentioned to me in the, in the past, actually recently, when he's, like, if he's felt discomfort in certain areas or whatever. And he'll come to me with no type of qualms. And if it's above my level i'll be like you know what you might have to ask your dad about that if that doesn't go away since i don't have mm-hmm. that equipment or whatever and he'll be like oh okay so there is there is a level of comfortability that he does have with that be- because we don't put a bunch of um shame around it but also at the same time he is still a a kid and mm-hmm. with a kid there will be some like Am I supposed to be talking about this with you? Like, this feels weird, you know? So, I don't know. It's hard 
especially, like I said, I've never gone through this before. Like every parent, if they are blessed and lucky enough to have their children live through, you know, puberty. I know sometimes people lose their kids early in that. But if they have their kids, you know, live through puberty, they experience this. But for me to experience it is definitely like, yeah. wow, this yeah, is crazy. This is happening. This is, yeah, this is happening. And I know, like I said. The, One of four times. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, right now, he tells me everything. Pretty much tells me everything. Anything I ask him, he tells me and he should tell me. But we're about to hit an age where there are certain things that he will want to remain kind of private. Yeah. And I can't be upset about that because he is like, those might be like, honest to God, private thoughts that should only be for him. And some things that I actually probably don't want to hear. If I'm really honest, uh, you know, not trying to be the cool mom. <laughs> being like, no, tell me what was the dream about? Huh? Oh, okay. But, you know, it's just... My mom's all in it. Uh, you know? <laughs> how, how how comfortable were you... Were you... Were, it wasn't more so conversations you had with your friends or were you more so, this is just for my thoughts for me or were you talking to your dad, your brother, your mom? Yeah, that was not a conversation that was had in my house. No, oh, okay. Uh, not for lack of them get, making me comfortable enough to go to them. It was just conversations that was never had. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, we didn't talk about that. That's not something that, that like, that that didn't have on socks with me until he knew, like, until I had my driver's license and I was staying out later than I used to. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was like, you wearing protection? You know, it was you having sex? I was like, no, of course I was. Uh-huh. Uh, it's like, right. you wearing protection? He's like, well, do you have uh, protection if you need? I was like, yeah, he said, why you got protection if you need sex? <laughs> Oh yeah, he waited till late, 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 yeah. late in the game. Um, but no, they, it was nothing that ever, they ever made me uncomfortable about. It just, just not a conversation that was had. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I knew what I needed to know. I don't feel How like did I, you I don't know. Like, um, just from one school, uh-huh. like you learn quite a bit in school. Um, mm-hmm. They probably need to go a little more in depth as far as the risk for teenagers or whatever, but. That was one of the things that, that was everybody picked up on. Of course, everybody in school, you hear it from your peers, which is a bad place to hear it, because especially with dudes. They're they, making uh, up yeah, stuff. Yeah, making lying. up a whole bunch of stuff they wasn't doing, just sitting yeah. around lying to each other. <laughs> uh, but yeah, just from school and searching and doing my own little research, because you know, it wasn't Google back then. Yeah, that was the same with me. I, yeah. was, I was researching, as I mentioned on the other podcast, the one that I do with Kev. I was talking about reading stuff in the library, reading romance novels, and that was my that was no. my like introduction oh, to in romance. I was in the encyclopedias and no, that that stuff <laughs> helped too. But like when it came to like just trying to figure out that part, the like what is it supposed to be like? What is the feeling? The yeah. romance novels, yeah, they got me through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You all can hear our co-host Amar, and it's his perfect timing because we're about to talk about our first sponsors. This is the first time we've ever worked with this sponsor, and when I tell you all, I'm probably more excited about working with this sponsor than um, I have with any of the others as, as far as in a first time because I feel like this is going to be so helpful for so many people in our audience. This sponsor is Peanut. Okay, so what is Peanut? Peanut is the app that helps you meet like-minded moms and Mm moms-to-be. Peanut provides a safe space for mothers, expectant mothers, and those trying to conceive, build friendships, ask questions, and find support. Introducing you to women nearby who are of similar a stage in life, Peanut provides access to a community of women who are there to listen, share information, and offer valuable advice. Whether it's understand, understanding IVF, adoption, pregnancy, first years, or nursery and beyond, Peanut is a place to connect with women like you. Now, I remember when I had little Marcus, I had no friends out here that had kids. I yeah. felt so alone. Yeah, I know then you would have jumped all over something like this. This would have been yeah. so beneficial to me. It sounds helpful. Because um, <laughs> it is. It's very, it's, um, it is very hard going at it alone. 
and it's always nice because pregnancy, even though you're growing someone, can sometimes feel like the lonely, loneliest time, especially if nobody else is going through it with you. It's always nice to have a pregnancy buddy, somebody who is pregnant with you. So now you can have a community of people who are either pregnant at the same time as you or going through the same thing. Like the, I can only imagine people going through adoption if there's no one else around them going through yeah. it. All the legalities, all the things to look out for. Like even it can the emotions be, alone. Uh, exactly yeah it could be difficult ivf just that some people carry a lot of shame when it comes mm -hmm. to uh um conception if it doesn't go the way that most people or they think most people you know get pregnant so i will say having something like this is just oh it's invaluable so this is what we would love for you to do Okay, because I signed up for Peanut. Um, while I do have a huge community of mom friends in like real life, I do feel like there is a wealth of knowledge that I can give to the community. So I signed up to be able to give advice and get get answers to questions like having my son go through puberty. Like if I didn't talk to the doctor, I would have never thought to get the book that I got. But this is something that I could have found out on this app about like, ah, uh, I need some help. Can somebody tell me what to do? This is going. This is what my son is going through. So this is what we need you to do. We need you to download the app for free today. It's 100% free. So you don't have to worry about anything. Another thing I will say before I, I give you all our link is that this community is so safe. This is a part of the sign up that I liked. You take a picture for your profile, right? If you want to take a picture for your profile. But what they also make you do is take a selfie of yourself so that they can verify you are a real person that isn't trying to be in this community unsafely. And that I feel like is important because is. dealing with you know, pregnancy, children, it's a very vulnerable space and you want to make sure you're in a safe space. So head to peanut.app.link slash Marcus and Angel or find it in the app store by typing in peanut. Is that I just found it by typing in peanut. But we would love it if the sponsors knew that you all came from us. So go to peanut.app.link forward slash Marcus and Angel. Mm -hmm. We want to really thank Peanut today for sponsoring this podcast. And more importantly, we want to thank them for creating a community, a safe community for moms and moms to be yeah. to connect. All right, you guys. <laughs> We're gonna jump into the topic of the day. This is a this is the first part uh -huh. of uh I'm not sure if it's gonna be a three part or a four part series. I've already um booked two speakers yeah. for this series that I'm super excited about that have a wealth of knowledge, you guys. Wherever your journey is when it comes to finances, we are hoping that this series that we're going to do with you all for this next couple of weeks are going to be beneficial. Um, so we wanted to start off the series not with an expert. We instead wanted to kind of give you all a little more insight on our money yeah. story our money story and how we've uh, matured or not yes. in dealing with finances and money. And what our money goals are because um, it's okay to have, like, everybody's money goal does not have to be, uh, I want to be stinking rich because a lot of times being stinking rich, especially as a black person, comes with a lot of sacrifices. Um, like, you can't have a bunch of kids sometimes like I did. Uh <laughs> Um, but anyways, let's start off with how we were raised when it came to finances, whether it be indirectly or directly. You want to start, babe? Um, yeah, I can start. So with me, I came from a two-parent household. My parents were always like good with money. They knew how to save. They never lived above their means. Um, and they... Uh, they, I never saw them struggle when it comes to finances, whether they did or not. Um, you know, maybe I didn't see it as a child, but they seemed, even as an adult, uh, they've always seemed to be on top of their finances. And that's, you know, is way we, what we, me and my brother and sister, that's what we experienced coming up with watching them. However, it doesn't seem like any of us fell in their footsteps. Uh, <laughs> um, because I don't feel like we, granted, 
we're in a different time because you know my parents especially my, my dad his biggest thing was save like save 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 you have to have you have to save that's the only way you're going to accomplish certain things that's the only way you're going to be rich or wealthy or be able to be live debt free you got to save to where as i do research now that i'm a little older it's like yes it is good to save but at the same time you need to invest mm -hmm. um and even when i was uh it's before i moved to california actually i think i was in high school maybe i was in college uh i remember them my parents talking about uh buying another house to rent out um and i was just talking to my dad like you should definitely do that but he he was still kind of old school he had heard horror stories about having tenants and all that type of stuff to where i look back on it now and i'm like you definitely should have made that move like that's um another way of building wealth that's another way of getting passive income um because they had the financial backing to do it is to purchase the house and rent it out and then you know pay that house off and just get even more um, income from it um so that's something different that i um that i would do i'm doing now differently uh than my parents did is i'm looking for ways to invest um granted i do save like uh oh go ahead what so you you're, so basically your parents were more about living comfortably more so than they were about building wealth yes Mm -hmm. See, they, they, my parents, they would buy vehicles, they would pay them off, they would keep those vehicles, they would live, they would have no payments, the only bills they would have were the bills coming in, the mortgage coming in, mm -hmm. and the bills, like, uh, utility bills coming in. They mm -hmm. didn't have any debt. If they had credit cards, they were the type of people, they would buy something with a credit card, and then put the money on the credit card to pay it off. Uh -huh. Like, they never had credit card debt. They had excellent credit scores. <laughs> yeah. Um... And that was a, and I feel like that was a very traditional way to live for their age. Yeah. Um, very traditional, very Kentucky. We were born and raised. Mm -hmm. It's like that. That was, and they were doing everything right. Like I remember, I never will forget this. When we got, um, I basically grew up in two houses. One house we had, they had uh, got when they were younger, and then that we sold the house, and they got a house built. And at the time, it was only one street in that neighborhood because it was a new development. And I remember being in, uh, I was in elementary school, and I remember telling this lady that uh, there were some people talking. They were talking about, you know, uh, oh, we live where, I used to live in one of the neighborhoods that they uh, lived in. I was like, oh, no, my parents just bought a house in, in this place. And we were on a field trip, and it was two mothers that heard me say this to my friends. And they were just like, yeah, right, y'all don't, you don't live over there. Like, no, they were like, no, you yeah. don't. <laughs> and I remember looking at them, but it, it, as being a child in elementary school, and I'm just like, oh, y'all not used to success. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> but I was just like, how you gonna tell a little child like, yeah, right, y'all don't live over there. Mm -hmm. But at the time, it was literally only one, actually two streets. It was the main street coming in that didn't have that many houses, and then our street that only had three houses on it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that was one of those things where it wasn't a struggle for my parents to do. I remember we were house hunting for a long time. They were looking at houses and found there. I was like, oh, we'll just build one. Um, once they found a neighborhood that they liked. So that was, uh, that, and that was something that the only thing that got passed to me was saving. So that's instilled in me. Mm -hmm. Like every bill that I pay, every, when I bill as far as like utility or anything, but everything that I finance, I have a bank account for that automatically transfers and I always put more than what's owed in that account. So I, and I got that from my dad. So I always overpay to that account. So as I'm paying that off, I'm actually building a savings account with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and what's different from my mom and dad, my mom is more of a risk taker and she will invest. My mom is always looking for a ways to invest. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the other, that's something I think I get from her is like, yeah, like what can I do? I'm willing to spend money to make money in the long run. Uh -huh. uh, my mom, she's all about stocks. She's all about whatever type of investment she can get into to get a nice return. Uh -huh. Um, you know, uh, yeah, get a sweet return. She's willing to do it and like, but she won't just do anything. She won't throw away money. Cause she'll call me. It's like, what should I do about this? I'm like, well, let's find out who you need to talk to. Well, your your mom, like my mom though, they they like to gamble. So oh, your yeah, mom no, no. will take risk when it no, comes no, to that. that. That's more of a that's a, that's a hobby. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, like daddy, he would gamble even though he ain't the one. Like he was very frugal when it came to certain things. Uh huh. Um, but he would even gamble. That's more of a hobby than I'm gonna try to go here and I'm gonna come back with 
triple when I went out. Like it's just like yeah, my, my, I think my both my moms they have a gambling gambling problem. But I think it's for two <laughs> I think it's for two different reasons. Yeah, I said it. Y'all have a gambling problem. Uh, uh, um, I uh, okay. So that's a little bit of the backdrop on him. Um, so I grew up a little bit different. Uh, a lot of bit different. I grew up in a one parent household. And with that, my mother was the financial provider. The thing that I kind of, I guess, I learned from watching her the most, I learned a couple of things. One was my potential earning could be as high as I wanted it to be. Hmm. It just all depended on how I worked. There was no type of thing of there's a cap of how much money I can earn. So, like... Making six figures right out of graduate school, while that was like a pleasant surprise, it wasn't something that I didn't think was unattainable. Like it was, it was never a thought in my head of if I can just make seventy five grand a year, mm -hmm. I'll be happy. It was a thing of I'll make as much money as I decide I want to make. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that was one of the plus sides because my mother, um, for most of my life, I can't say it's the same for my sisters, but for most of my life. She was making a nice amount of money, especially compared to my friend's parents, mm -hmm. right? Um, however, in the scope of things, I don't think my mother had a lot of financial literacy. So, uh, like I feel like m my mother, there is a, while we can garner a lot of money we can get a lot of money mm -hmm. we will nickel and dime money away mm -hmm. so like not having <clears throat> things to show for it so not actually building wealth not mm -hmm. actually even understanding in particular how to create a plan and how to execute the plan or how to have a goal and then execute the steps to reach the goal yeah. a lot of our you know, we grew up, I grew up in a time where the church was big on preaching prosperity, right? Mm -hmm. There's still a part of it where, you know, God is going to bless you. He's going to give you the money. And then that would be the financial plan. Yeah. God going to bless you. <laughs> He's going to give you the yeah. money. That would be the financial plan where, yes, God can bless. God can give you an abundance. But there was, uh, it was like faith. But there was no actual legitimate, tangible working, works working toward the faith to yeah. work towards it. Um, See, that was that's interesting because you were taught that there's no cap to your earning to where, like my both my parents had well paying jobs. That was what I was taught was like get a good career and be responsible with that money. Last loud often asked if uh, did my parent did my family teach me about money. That was their way of teaching me about money was them not being. They didn't keep us in the dark of how they handle things. It's like, you know, we pay this off. You know, why don't you get a new car? I remember we bought that house. Uh, the the second house, it was just like, why are we pulling up in this nice neighborhood in these busted cars? Yeah. You know, it was like at one point in time, it was almost embarrassing. Like, dang, why, why don't y'all just buy a new car? They was like, for what? We don't need no new car. Yeah. And then eventually, you know, they just bought new cars when they wanted them. It was like, all right. Then they were... Got to the point to where it's like, no, we're going to keep some new cars now. Right. But they could at that point. You know, they could live comfortably. So you all had surface level conversations, but not like too many like mechanics about No, it. no. The, what the, the, that, my daddy, he had a thing of, he used to do these charts of if you should be saving this much a month. Mm -hmm. If you save this much a week, you it's easy to save this much a month. It's easy to save this much a year. Uh -huh. And in five years, you'll have this much. Right. Which right. is a lot easy to a lot easier to do or save than do mm -hmm. when you, you know, wasn't working consistently as he was. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> and when you did start working, it's just like, yeah, I got this money now. Let me spend it a little bit, you know. Yeah. Um, c coming from someone because it ain't like they gave us allowance. Granted, they would, you know, if we needed something. They would help us out or give us money, but it wasn't like my parents were just handing me money hand over fist. Like, that was not happening. So, it, was, right. it got to the point to where I knew that. I never asked for expensive things. Like, I think we talked last time about, like, Jordans and shoes and buying expensive clothes and stuff. It's like, mm -hmm. I never asked for anything extremely expensive uh -huh. until I started working. And I was like, 
I wouldn't I wouldn't mind. I was like, hey, um, could you help me get this and I'll pay you back? Yeah, yeah. You know, and they were fine with that. That was how I kind of learned, like, it was a way of, quote, unquote, financing early. Yeah. It was like, I knew, yeah, I spent this. I didn't have the money to buy it, which is what most people do when they finance. They, they can't afford it, but they just pay it off over time. Um, I know for me, one thing that kind of opened my eyes to some money, like how to kind of handle money that stuck with me, but I don't know if I've implemented it the way I should. When I was in middle school, I ended up, sorry guys, when I was in middle school, I ended up in, in a special math program where they taught us how to pay bills, what it looked like to look at Hold on, guys. This boy is loud as all get out. Yeah. But while I go deal with him, why don't you go ahead and tell him about our next sponsor, Magic Spoon, who has been a fan of the podcast. Um, I'll real quickly tell you that what I love about Magic Spoon, you all know that I am a WW partner. The frosted flavor of Magic Spoon, which Marcus is going to tell you about it, is so low points that it is one of the few um, breakfast options that I will actually delve into because I know that it'll keep my points, my smart points low for the top of my day. Go ahead and tell them. Yeah, about. I'm going to tell y'all real quick about this Magic Spoon. Now, one thing I like to do when I, as soon as I get home from work is eat. Magic Spoon is one of those cereals that feels like you shouldn't be eating it as an adult because it's bad for you. That's how good it is, but actually it's not that bad for you. Um, it tastes like a kid cereal. It really does. It's, um, it's not bad for you at all. It's not bad for you at all. I'm about to go over the nutritional facts. It's uh, zero sugar, mm -hmm. which is already diff so much is night and day from any other regular. A, a lot uh, of the cereals, you might as well be eating candy. A bowl of cereal, a bowl of sugar is what you <laughs> might as well be eating. But it's zero sugar, 11 grams of protein, and only three net grams of carbs. Um, but with each earth, each serving, it has four flavors: cocoa, fruity, frosty, uh, frosted, and blueberry. Blueberry was Marcus's that was favorite. That's my favorite, y'all. I end up loving the frosted the most. Tearing it up, I was able to eat that with unsweetened almond milk and was uh, happy, <laughs> happy. Yeah, no, it it tastes the cereal's good, like flat out good, y'all. Um, it's keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, low carb, and GMO free. Yes. Um, we done, we done already told them what our favorite flavors are. So let's uh, just go ahead and tell uh, them where they can get to it. Yes, y'all go to magicspoon.com and enter our code, um, what is that, backslash argue to grab a variety pack and try it free. Uh, try it today. And be sure to use our promo code argue at check uh, checkout to get free shipping. So and Magic Spoon is so confident in their products. It is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. That's magicspoon.com slash argue. And use the code argue for free shipping. <laughs> Angel threw me out because she didn't repeat argue. I was waiting for it. <laughs> Sorry. We thank Magic Spoon for sponsoring the podcast. I Absolutely, really Magic Spoon. We appreciate y'all. And thank you for making such a wonderful cereal. Yes. Are you just going? You just going to tell them about it too? Oh, now you get quiet. So he only wants to talk when I talk. Yeah, apparently. And then when I stop, let's see. Let's see when I stop. No. <laughs> He's so loud. So what I was going to say is the program that I was in in middle school. Hold on, real quick. You remember you were telling me about. Um, when you was doing, what was that, co cover, color guard? Yeah. And you used to throw the baton and every time you would drop it. And that was the routine that you yeah. learned in your head. So the one time you actually caught it, you didn't know what to do next. Yes. That's how it was. It's like, you're supposed to repeat that before I move on. I was like, argue. <laughs> and check it. <laughs> Bless your anyway, heart. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You was in the program. Um, they taught us how to look at the stock reports. They taught us how to get information from companies we wanted to invest in. They taught us how to write checks out of checkbooks. Like, even, like, your check should not have the date that the bill is due. It should be at least a week in advance or at least a couple of days so that you're paying this on time. This was back in 6th and 7th grade that um, I was in this program. We did, um, I did... I think it was an elective that they touched on that where it was the same thing. It was like, um, 
It, the, the, it started off with like a check balancing thing, which nobody knows how to do that now because nobody writes checks no more. But it was like check balancing um, and a bunch of different financial things. It even talked about like uh, like Roth IRA. It was yeah. It hit on a bunch of different things. It probably was new to the the program was probably new to the school, so they didn't have like a mm -hmm. written out like this is what they should be taught and this should be the result. But we hit, kind of hit that, but it wasn't anything, I don't think, as detailed it's, as yours was. Uh, yeah, ours was literally written into the curriculum of this math program. But I will say that was probably the most in-depth, like, conversations about money that I had in my entire adolescence. Mm -hmm. I remember the first opportunity going into college, um, I wanted a pager. And, you know, a lot of these credit card institutions prey on college students. Oh, absolutely. So I got a credit card so I could get a free pager. And the way it worked is that your pager, your monthly charges were automatically charged onto your credit card. And being a broke college student, I, eventually I was like, I can't even pay it. So that was my first ding on my credit mm. was me not being able to pay this dag on. Uh, and it was cheap. It was like. $30 a month, but I was a broke college student, so I was just like, I can't. And then getting the notices of, like, the debt collector for this $30 or however many much money it ended up totaling to, yeah. I didn't care. But even with that, like, what I've been trying to unlearn is this mindset of debt being a necessity in life. And I think I picked that up by watching people in my family, like the part that feeling like debt is a necessity. Like, yeah. oh, you got to have, you got to have good. And what I mean by debt is a necessity yeah. is uh, most because, people live by this. because we feel like we have to have a good credit score to have a great life. To have a good credit score, you have to have debt. Yes. There is no way to have a credit score unless you have debt. That's what I was about to say. A lot of people, um, they like harp on this great credit score. It's like my credit score is this, which means, oh, that means you've owed this much money and you've just paid it back. Or you owe this much money and you're good at being on time with those payments. Yes. Um, and that's how this country, the country is literally, our financial institution is set up for people to be in debt, not yes. debt free. Right. That's the only way to be successful in, or in that realm of it, of having good credit. They it, set it up to where, like, we'll make these people look good as long as they owe money. Right. I mean, you, there are a lot of people who absolutely are, like, want to in our... Their goal is to have the 800 uh, yes. credit, credit score. score. Yeah. And not to say... Not to knock those people because that means that they are on top of their stuff. And they might be... You know, they possibly never needed to have debt at all. They just did it because they wanted to have it. Right. But um, that has been... Something that not until my adult, like grown, grown, not like 20 something, but grown, grown life that I didn't realize have been so inundated in me that it became a true like belief, almost like a religion that there was no such thing as actually having the money to pay for the thing you want. Mm -hmm. It's all about having the money to make payments before for the thing you want. Like yeah. truly, it was mind blowing. Marcus and I sat through most of Financial Peace University and I will not lie to you, we have not. The only step I've implemented is like baby step number one. Um, but uh, just that mindset, and that's even something that like, I would say his parents probably did not teach him because like, it's not like they bought their house cash. It's not like no. they bought their vehicles, new vehicles, cash. They paid those cars off right. based off of debt. So paying interest to financial credit. Yeah. Uh, with, um, the only thing I will say with like, they would always pay things off early. Quickly. Like, yeah. yeah, they would pay them off quickly. Like that's always my parents go. Even the few times I can recall that they had like credit card payments or whatever. It was just like, it was like, okay, we're not going to keep this for more than a year. Like, mm -hmm. we're going to pay this off right away. Mm -hmm. And their cars, like mom, mom and daddy, one thing they always did was double and triple up on car payments. Mm -hmm. and like, pay them off really quickly. Same with the house. Their mortgage, they always put extra toward the mortgage. Like, it was just, our mortgage is this, but we're going to pay this. Mm -hmm. And, like, that was one thing that, that was always instilled in them. 
um, if they when they do finance. But like something that I didn't even realize was a possibility until I talked to our friend who is watching the podcast right now. He's actually going to be our first speaker next week. Um, our friend Damien. His way of buying a car is if he knows he's going to buy a car, he will either pull it from pay for it from his savings or from an account and then make car payments to himself. So instead yeah. of paying interest, but Damon got money like that. Well, because he's made, <laughs> right. I mean, you gotta have a certain amount of money like, to be yeah, able yeah. to do that. By this hundred and twenty thousand dollar car, I'm just but, gonna pull it from his little account over here and pay but myself. He's but cars no, it makes like sense. Yeah. he's not buying cars like that. He's not buying cars like that. But if you're capable, like for instance, your parents, if mm -hmm. they're capable of making three or four car payments, they're capable of saving up those car payments first. Yeah, that first, makes a lot of sense. And then paying Pretty for good. the car and then paying yourself back so that account. Yeah, because that interest, that two point or one point, or if you have horrible credit, seventeen point whatever uh, interest rate, you're not paying. Right. So, um, my my financial story growing up, like I said, being raised by a single mother, uh, who, like I said, made a lot of money. However. And not to say that owning a home has to be your goal. Like we talked about this on Married at First Sight. Mm -hmm. Not to say that you have to be a person that can leave a bunch of money to your kids. I mean, that's a lot of people's goal. It's not everybody's goal. Right. Um, but being that it is my goal to be able to live, you know, financially comfortable and to be able to, while I'm living set my sons up mm -hmm. to uh, be comfortable as they grow into adulthood. And then when I'm gone, set them up to have a huge nest egg. You know what I'm saying? Um, I realized that what I grew up with is, is not sufficient to take me to there. Um, I feel like my, my mother did the best she could with her background, but because financial, even with your own household, mm -hmm. financial literacy to the point that we could know is not really taught in a lot of black homes because no, we don't know it. No, we don't. Um, the the information is now accessible to everyone where before the, the, the accessibility, was it, it wasn't. It wasn't a thing where we knew where what people were doing to get money like right. or that we had access to buy those properties or, or access to buy land. But... Yeah, and that goes even deeper. It's, you know just the, the through the history of being black in this country uh -huh. we're starting off at a deficit right so this is in general this is new information that's being fed to black people right granted even though it's been available people we didn't know to look for it now you see more and more people starting to look for it or being exposed to it and they're just like well hold up so now yeah, i feel like our generation is the first generation that's like no i'm gonna leave i want my kids to have what those white kids had. Mm -hmm. Granted, it wasn't passed from four generations ago. It's getting passed from one generation. But I hear more and more conversations like that. And not just white, not just the white kids. A lot of immigrants come oh, over immigrant. here, well, that's a whole, starting yeah. off so much better. Because yeah, the immigrants are starting off because I mean, a lot of them come from come from money, and they come here, and it's just like, okay, no, I can have this. And I'll get this for my kids already, like off the and bat. And even if they don't come from money, there is a whole there is a whole different relationship with money. Yeah. We are, as Americans, we are a country that is um, obsessed with consumerism. We spend money like crazy. When you think about a lot of the people that come over from smaller countries, like when they or they come over from Korea, they put their money in a pot. They yeah. all invest in a business yeah. together when they get over here. They make money off of that business. They live in a house together to keep down their expenses. Mm -hmm. There's a there is a um feeling of delayed gratification is worth it. That I don't think one we as one we as black people I think a lot of times have a um a problem. And I don't want to make a complete blank statement, but with delayed gratification, it's like once we have it, like when you think of rappers, when you think of basketball players, when you think of the people that we see in our community that make it big, not to say that there aren't people making it big in other ways. A lot of times our first thing we want to do. The one that's in the spotlight. We want to stunt. Yeah, we want to stunt. We want to drop that cash. We're trying to buy every single vehicle. <laughs> 
We're right. trying to, you know... It's, Wear all the ice, wear all the chains. Yeah. And not to knock it, because that does not have to be... That can be your goal. Your goal does not have to be right. building wealth. But if we don't see the images of building wealth enough, we don't we don't realize that's an option. Right. Um. So... One of the we'll uh, move into some of our yeah, our goals. Really big. One thing, really quick. I said really big. One thing you see out here is you see um, people that are first generation living in you know whether out here in California, or wherever. You see these big extravagant houses, and you'll see you know seven or eight cars parked out in front of them because there's probably four or five families living in those. Mm -hmm. But these cars are like two and three hundred thousand dollar cars. Mm -hmm. And they don't, like she said, they don't mind living together to build something. Because the next thing you know, it's like, oh, we build this. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to start this separate uh, franchise over here. Oh, I'm going to start this separate. And it's just like, yeah, there's no point in us going into extreme debt separately when we can do it together and build it, pay it off together, and then branch out and do something different. And that's something I would love to see our people start doing. Yes. So I'm going to tell you all a little bit of my current um, financial situation without putting you too much into my business. It's more so mindset than it is a little bit situation as well. Marcus, you give mindset in some situation. Um, Marcus and I don't have multiple credit cards. We have one that we are constantly trying, we, that we don't use, that we're consistently trying to get paid off so that we don't ever have to look at it again. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have two cars that are being currently financed through financial institutions, mine and then Marcus's little love bug that he loves, yeah. his halo. That's about to be a tax right now. Um, yes, it better be. It's about to be. We, That's the reason I bought it. The, so go ahead, go ahead. The other debt we have is this house, as well as our, um, as well as my student loans. Marcus' student loan is so small we could pay it off now. <laughs> I could have paid. I can actually write a check to pay it off, but I'm like, why? I should. But. You should. But um, so while we don't have a bunch of different debts, literally one credit card, two cars, a house, and my student loans, it is an an alarming amount because of my student loans and then also having a house is not no small thing it is a right. big it's a big financial undertaking so um while we have that right where my mindset that i struggle with the most is one trying to figure out what things that i should be buying for my business mm -hmm. and not feeling so like scared to purchase things for my business. And then two, also feeling some type of way about like putting huge amounts on my debt. Mm -hmm. Because I'm just like, but what if something happens right. that I did not expect that I could have used that money for? So a lot of my decisions sometimes are based on fear, which I know is a problem when it comes to finances instead of based on actual strategy. So it's something in my mind that I'm always having to battle. But before Marcus goes into his uh, financial like position now and where what he's trying to do, we want to jump into our third sponsor, who is... One of our favorites that has sponsored our podcast multiple times, and I feel like it's probably the most prevalent and relevant um, sponsors that we could have currently, and that is BetterHelp, spelled better, H-E-L-P. Now, if there's something interfering with your happiness or preventing you from achieving your goals, but as you all heard just now... <laughs> With my financial goals, I feel like I, move, I operate more in fear more than in um, firmly knowing what I want and trying to achieve those things. Um, BetterHelp will assist or assess, excuse me, your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Okay, because a lot of the things that a lot of decisions and emotions you have in life are based on something, and sometimes you need a professional. Um, to be able to help pinpoint that so that you can start changing your behaviors and moving forward in the way that you really want to move forward in. You can start communicating in over 48 hours with a professional from BetterHelp. 
this is not a crisis line, okay? And it's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. The serv service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor. You'll get timely, thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as, tradi as with traditional therapy. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so that they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling and financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. You can visit their website. You can read their testimonials. You can see that there are real people getting better help from mm -hmm. better help. Like, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I will say, um, especially like a lot of people don't realize that you need somebody to talk to. Mm -hmm. Like, it ain't always, like, your friends. Um, I go on to Angel a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but, but even she has told me, it's like, I'm not an expert. You need to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. um, especially, not even in these times, like, especially as black people. We need somebody to talk to. Don't be afraid, especially black men. I know y'all out here, y'all watching. Y'all listening right now to the podcast. Y'all, Some of y'all listening live. If you need somebody to talk to, do not be afraid to reach out because it is in extremely important mm -hmm. and it can change your life. We have seen it change people's lives. Our friend Kev on stage, he like this is a completely different man today than what he was two months ago. Right. Completely like night and day different. Yeah. Um, and even even us, it's like as we work through things, as we talk through things and work through things, we realize what's going on. It's extremely important that you talk to somebody to help you work out your issues. A licensed professional. Yes. You hear me? So what we would like you to do is to visit betterhelp.com forward slash argue. Argue. That's better, H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. Special offer for, is this going to cause an argument, listeners? Get 10% off your first month with BetterHelp.com slash argue. Argue. See how you leave you hanging. I appreciate you, baby. Again, we want to thank our sponsors. Let me tell you, this was a dream to be able to have sponsors that felt like our podcast, our platform was in, was impactful enough that they would want to um, use us to spread the message mm -hmm. of what they have and what services they offer. It just uh warms my heart. It really does. That um that these sponsors uh would want to be a part of our podcast. So we hope that you all will check them out. Whatever walk of life you're going uh, walking through. If one of these sponsors can be helpful, we hope that you check them out and you use our promo code or the link that they have provided for our podcast. So Marcus, what is your current financial situation and your current financial mindset? Uh, current financial situation is, um, well, I have at this point, let me think. It's not the first time I've had multiple streams of income. Mm -hmm. um, just from before I moved to California, I had my job and then I had a bunch of side hustles, which was either carpentry or other electrical work. Mm -hmm. And actually, me and my cousin used to have a lawn care business. Um, so it's not the first time. However, as a more mature adult that had a different outlook on finances, um, this is the first time of having multiple streams of income. And luckily, I have a responsible partner, even though Angel says that she's not responsible. She is, she is very responsible when it comes to uh, finances. However how intelligent we are with finances may be a little different. Yeah. But I feel like we both can be responsible, but we also uh, live by that creed of we still deserve mm. to enjoy ourselves a little bit. Yeah. It's yeah. not, you know, dying to save. Yeah. Um. So right now it's like I've noticed, um, and I've said this before on the podcast, I know I told Angel, the, it's like the more money I make, the least desirable I am to spend it. Like, I'm more reluctant to spend it the more I make. Uh -huh. And that's because I'm seeing the result of my accounts starting to fill up or just the, how many different ways i am discovered that I can save or, mm -hmm. you know, just throw money somewhere to where I won't touch it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I see I see that and it's motivating. It's just yeah. like, okay, I, I got this much in there. Mm -hmm. Let me try to double that. Okay. Um, and that's my goal. And it, it's worked out pretty well so far. It's like the the financial peace thing definitely helped. Yeah. Um, of like 
looking at it differently, I found I've one thing it took for me is uh, studying how I spend money and how because me mine's a little different. I know currently I know exactly what I'm gonna make every right. single week. Right. Yes. Which makes it night and day from Angel situation. So Ooh. mine is like I'm still with my career, still with my company. Um, so I w go to work every day. So I see exactly, I know exactly what's going to come hit my account on Wednesday or Thursday. Mm -hmm. This week, next week, the week after, I know exactly what that is. So it's easy for me to plan it out. Yeah. Um, and that's why I think the other reason is I'm a little more um, likely to spend money over Angel. Because it's like, oh, no, no, no. I got this. I can take this from this. And I can replace that next week. And I still got these that I, you know, for backup. So Angel's coming from a different place. However, me... It's like, as I do see those accounts build up, it's just like, no, nah, I don't want to spend any money. It's like, do I need clothes right now? Do I need shorts? Absolutely. <laughs> but, I, but you know, before I would have been, if I didn't have as much as I do now, I would have been like, you know what? I need to buy some, I deserve some shorts. Mm -hmm. But right now I'm just like, ain't nobody going to see me. And if they do, if they see me in these camouflage shorts for three weeks, guess what? They clean. No. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what, and, and that's where we are still trying to figure out a marriage. Um, how to balance that. Somebody asked if our parents taught us how to budget. Mine mine did not. I still don't know how to budget because my career mm -hmm. is so um, like feast or famine. Like I still have the hardest time trying to figure out how, ooh, how to um, budget appropriately. I now have a little more consistent income like uh, or money with the different with the various streams of income as long as i stay on this path that i'm on i can kind of guesstimate how much money i'll bring in each month but that was not the case until the pandemic yeah well here's the thing um i believe angel you could definitely budget without question had you it, had your income been consistent for a long time oh yeah like angel like y'all don't understand how frugal and how smart angel is with me. i don't think you completely understand yet but angel's income has is always been such a roller coaster yeah of and that's how most you know unless they're on a like act this is the first time you stepped outside the box of just being an actress or do y'all like being called actresses or actors? It doesn't matter. I like to be called em paid. employed. Yeah, there okay. you go. Okay, but uh, as as for most of them, unless you're they're on a reoccurring or a st or a starring in a show, it's always this roller coaster of hills and valleys. It's like, yeah, I made three hundred k the first quarter of the year, but I didn't work the rest of the year, and then taxes sees it as, oh, you make three hundred k every quarter. No, and they so snatch yeah, that they money snatch up out of my check. So. Angel, um, the, how well she's been able to do, one, her hustle, but two, how well she's been able to work with money that is not guaranteed. The way, I mean, nobody's money is guaranteed, but the way mine has been yeah. consistently, mm -hmm. I think you've done extremely well with that. I've always Thank thought you. you've done well with it. Thank you. I, I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. I feel like, yes, if I had been having consistent income all this time. Like right now, with the more consistent money, I'm more so already thinking about taxes. So I, the, the biggest thing that my brain is set on has not even been, okay, let's pay down this debt. It's making sure that when taxes come, that I am set, that they're not asking for money that I don't have sitting in my account already ready for them or that, um, or that I'm not either, it would, would be even better having already paid them and um we are like at zero so i don't owe you you don't owe me we we good mm -hmm. um but what i was about to say the part that i think for us that we have to work through is because i'm the one that has my eyes more on our debt other than even though he handles the car debt he's the one that pays that yeah we we split that off and it's like angel handle some things i handle other things right and it's just like unless like if she comes to me it's like no i need help with this i'm like all right mm -hmm. if i come to her like hey i'm gonna need help with this it would be like all right but we have yet to come to that because we've is it pretty it's pretty even yeah, as far as even. as far as who pays what is like we i just pay put it more things um in general well i pay attention to the bills in more in general as far as in like most a lot of the stuff is in my name so i know what's coming down the pipeline where Marcus has his things but if I see something come down the pipeline that needs a portion from him mm -hmm. I'll let him know so just in case um, some of you all might not realize this me and Marcus operate 
not in the traditional Christian sense. Marcus has his own accounts. I have my own accounts. And then we have a joint yeah. account. The joint account is what we uh, do ebb and flow of money. So if he needs to add in more of something, like uh, like our mortgage, our mortgage yeah, our goes mortgage in. Goes and that our mortgage payment yeah. goes into that account. Um, but and it's like and it, that's just for people wondering how that works because some people are like that's blasphemy. <laughs> but it's like one of those things. It's like um, we'll go out like let's just for example, I don't know, like the mukbangs. Let's say we spend X amount of hundreds of dollars on food. I'm just like, you want me to help with that? She was like, uh, I'm going to need you to carry that or I'm going to need you to go in half. I'm like, how much? I'll just put it in the joint account. Right. And she'll pull out whatever, you know, needs. But the joint account is also, we kind of treat it like a savings. Like, we put money in there not just to spend. It's just like, let's build that up too. Yeah. So, the part that I was saying we still have to figure out is because I have a clear vision of more of the things when Marcus is sitting on a storehouse in his savings, <laughs> my brain is like, yeah. but there's this thing that we could just pay off, right? So um, that's something that hopefully as we start like really being intentional about our money, not that, like I said, because of what our goal is, if mm -hmm. we didn't have the goals that we had financially, the way we're operating is just fine. But because we have goals of actually building financial wealth while we're alive with our children, mm -hmm. there are some actions that we're taking now that are not going to actually get us to those goals. So, um, again, and just to re go ahead. Like you, I kind of live in that fear of, because we've been there before. Where it's like, oh, we have this big expense. Where is it going to come from? Yeah. And it's like now, over the you know past couple of years, it's like, okay, I'm building this up. If we have an expense up to a certain amount, like an emergency expense, it's like, oh, no, that's taken care of at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, it's just like, we could, how quickly could we build that up? Right. If I just go ahead and pay off whatever. <laughs> yes. Because the, to be completely honest, there have been a couple of surprises that have come up on us that if mm -hmm. it wasn't for our parents... We would have been SOL. Not SOL to the point that we were just like, like there wasn't another option. It was just going to be an option that we didn't want to have to take. Right. And I, we, and obviously, I don't want us to ever be in that place ever again. Mm -hmm. But I feel as though it. we just have a lot of growth. So we are not doing this series as a way to show you. We've got it down packed. No, we don't. Thanks, We're far guys. from down packed. We, yes. we are very far. But we decided that since we're on this journey, because we're getting ready, we want to buy a new house, which is very un Dave Ramsey. But we are like, well, oh, well, Dave, we're still going to yeah, do it. Dave Ramsey would be like, well, sell the vehicles. You can kiss my ass, Dave. <laughs> I ain't selling nothing. So, There's one I would like to sell right now, though. Um, but I'm keeping a Mustang. <laughs> so, um, we we want to allow you to know where we're starting at in this journey. Mm -hmm. And we also wanted you to be able to come on the journey with us because this is there is no way out of getting out of finances. Like, e even if you are a billionaire, you still, most billionaires are not billionaires and thinking... I don't ever want to make another dime again. They right. want to become even more wealthier. They right. want to spend other people's money and keep their money. Actually, that's how, usually how that works. <laughs> yes. So, um, again, we are going to be having our co-host had things to say. <laughs> He's like, they better not uh, not have nothing left for me. Right? Goofy. Um, so we will be having people on that we respect their outlook on mm. money. Again, we're not um, we're not endorsing anybody as a fact of you have to follow what they're doing. Yeah. We're just hoping that the information that they share is something that could be potentially helpful for you. Yeah, because you never know what, what, what might be helpful for you and what might not. So like, unless you hear it, it may come from a completely different avenue that you never thought of. Right. So um, we, we're not even sure if this will help us. Right. We listen. <laughs> listen. I am in currently in a group called Fire, um, which means financial independence, retire early. And some of my goals are not the goals that are in the group. But I will say, which is very, which is very interesting. The person who will be our second guest, she had us make a vision board. Not for 2021. She had us make a vision board for 2030. Not only that, it was a financial vision board. 
she knows exactly what she wants her net worth to be by 2030. And she's actually doing like actual steps. This is not, let me just manifest money coming to me. She's looking at her current paycheck. She's looking at what her, her earning potential will be and what she will need to earn in certain years how much she needs to put away, what she needs to invest in, what she needs to invest in to actually make one plus one equals two. So like that was my first time ever seeing that. I was like, wait a minute, you're actually planning on this being your net growth? She says, oh, yeah, yeah, confidently like, yeah, like, yeah, why not? Because it's actual yeah. math. It's right. not It's not magic, it's math. Yeah, that, and that was kind of not to say it's on any type of the same level. That was daddy's thing with saving. He was just like, mm -hmm. you save this much a week. You put in, not even save, you put this much in your account a week. You put this much, that means you'll have this much a month, this much a year. In 10 years, you'll have this much. Right. And it was like, Simple for him to say. I was like, you know how hard it is at my age. Right, I right. Still wouldn't do that. <laughs> so actually, I probably should have, and I'd be sitting pretty large. But um, uh, my girlfriend, who's going to come on, she's not a financial expert. However, she is a lover, lover of finance, of of investments, of bank accounts. Like she's just a wealth of knowledge that has opened my eyes to so many things that I could be doing better. Um, especially with savings, this is my first year as a, this is my first year. And uh, like, I don't feel any shame in this. This is my first year of actually having a savings account that I'm using appropriately. Hmm. I have never had a savings account that has actually held money for an extended period of time for a reason. You know ever. what? You know what? This is, um, Every time I've had a savings account up until this year, you know what? This pandemic helped me <laughs> uh -huh. because that was one of the uh, things that kind of started me help stockpiling. I ain't gonna mm. say stockpiling ain't like I'm sitting on a gold mine, but it's like I wasn't spending so much on gas. Uh. And like just that difference, you know, my, my truck, especially when gas is up out here in LA, it's like a hundred dollars a week. Mm -hmm. So that extra hundred dollars a week for me. It's like just money. It's like, okay, I got this money. Let me throw that over there. I'm going to forget about that. Oh, I'm going to throw this over there. I'm going to forget about mm -hmm. that. And it's like the first time it's like, all right, I've had a savings account because usually every few months it's like something comes up. It's like, well, let me just dip into this savings account. That'll split off half of this that I'm going to have to pay for. Um, but that's, what, and that's what's great to see because a lot of times we'll think a, an amount is too insignificant for it to actually have an effect on our finances. Mm -hmm. But every dollar counts towards Damn, something. That's what I've realized. Every, every single do dollar. That's why I don't get upset. When people say I can no longer do Patreon because my finances won't allow it. Yes, Patreon is only $5. And people do waste $5 yeah. all the time. So I'm thinking, well, at least we're giving you high quality content. But I do now understand as a person who's trying to have a different relationship with money. That $5 after a while, that $60 you could have had growing in a savings account. If you were a Patreon. dollars a year, yeah. Yeah, the $60 a year that you spend could have been growing in a savings account. I am not trying to persuade anyone not to be my Patreon. Please, if you got the $5. Yeah, if you got friends that got it, send them over send here because we're going to entertain them. I'd rather you give up coffee <laughs> than to give up me, okay? Because yeah. I'm going to give you way more energy. For you. Coffee ain't gonna give you no insight. <laughs> Coffee ain't gonna help you love Nobody your won't spouse burnt more. Beans. Coffee ain't gonna give you laughs. <laughs> it might give you gas, but it ain't gonna give you. Coffee ain't got the slum lord, okay? And that's what you get for this five dollars on our Patreon. Who's on my last nerve? Him and uh, him and Cy. And so, you guys, oh. I am so excited about this series. I have been putting it off, putting it off, and I was like, nope, we're starting today. She today literally i was like no we're starting it she was like no we're starting this series i was like oh, I, don't, I don't know if he I'm was ready like hey wait 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 whoa whoa whoa, 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 whoa. easy easy baby easy uh but we started yeah. it today and we hope that you all enjoy it um we'll be doing it for like i said uh I don't know by next week if this is about to be a three part. No, it's a four part series. It is a four part series. So get ready for all these amazing guests we're going to have on. If you all have questions, it, please let us know ahead of time. Uh, either email me at pregnantangel at gmail.com. If you're watching this, you can just put it in the comments of the video. Um, as always, you can follow me on every platform at that chick angel you can follow marcus at marcus in on the gram marcus in on the book on instagram and facebook you can check out man shit that's my beard and body butter you can find that at manshit.com that's m-a-n-s-h-y-t 
It's a beard and body butter. I'm currently working on other products. I got branding that I'm working on right now. But check that out. Um, again, a special thank you to our sponsors, Peanut. Check yes. out Peanut the app. You can go to peanut.com. Mm -hmm. No, peanut. Dot, turn to the mm, page so I can say it right. I'm over here. Just it over off, I, I thought it is right yeah. there. It is peanut.app.link slash Marcus and Angel. Again, <laughs> that's peanut.app.link slash Marcus and Angel. You can also check out Magic Spoon at magicspoon.com slash RU and, and BetterHelp at betterhelp.com slash RU. Check out all of our sponsors. Show them some love while they're showing us some love. Absolutely. Join our Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash that chick angel. Thank you so much to the immediate family for Appreciate being here. Pew, 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 pew. And we will see you all next Wednesday with more yeah. finance and family. Absolutely. We'll see you all then. Yeah, have a good one, family. Bye. That chick. <laughs>